I'm the one thing, I'm glad he did it. Amen. If he never tells me how, I'm glad he did it. Hallelujah. I'm standing here <laughs> because you made a way. We are here today because he made a way. If God would allow you and I to see what the enemy wanted to do, we'd probably faint right here on the spot. That's the kind of God that we serve. My, my, my. We're so familiar with the story about David and Goliath. What's interesting is that the Philistines presented a problem for the Israelites, but the Israelites didn't know that the Philistines had a problem also. Because when the giants and the Goliaths in our lives present themselves to us, they present themselves as larger than life. And they appear to be overwhelming. But what we don't know is that really the giant has a problem. The giant has a problem because of who you belong to and who you know. It starts out that Israel had a problem. Little did Goliath know that he had a bigger problem than himself. See, I, I'm just trying to paint it that when it starts out, I think I heard that in the altar prayer, that when it starts out, it looks like I'm losing. But if I can just hang in there, I'll be winning. I've seen some boxing matches where it looked like the winner was going to lose. But the winner was able to hang in there long enough to get a V. God is just trying to say, hang in there, somebody. Hang in there. Your Goliath is not as big as he or she presents themselves. We'll use Goliath, the giant, as a metaphor for anything that is facing you in your life that seems greater than life, that seems overwhelming in your life. That's your Goliath. Let us pray. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you because you're worthy of all the praise. Have your way continuously in this service and in this message. Move me out of the way so you can just take over totally. In Jesus' name, amen. You have to know that when you're a Christian, that giants will show up. The title of the message is Victory in the Name of Jesus. We often talk about greater is he that is in me or he that is in us than he that is in the world. And, and I like 1 Samuel 7 because this describes exactly the greatness that we have within. Because it's victory in the name of Jesus. The Goliath is going to show up in our lives. And the, the whole issue is what am I going to do with this Goliath? Because when you read the word of God, when you read this chapter, he kept on prancing. And both about what he's going to do to me. He kept he kept. Prancing around the Israelites. They said he's about 10 feet tall. He kept prancing and telling them and trying to intimidate them and trying to tell them, you all can't beat me. That's what he was doing. Look at 1 Samuel 17, 10. And I defy, the first thing said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. They were set up for battle against one another. There was a valley in between. But the Philistines said, let me send, let me send my best man out. Let me send my big boy out to scare the Israelites. And you find out later on the Israelites were scared. Verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And see, David's brothers were part of the army. David was too young to be in the army. So David was back home tending his father's sheep. And look at verse 16 of 1 Samuel 17. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself 40 days. Morning and evening for 40 days trying to get all up in your face, trying to mess with your family, trying to mess with your marriage, your money, your job, your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. Just for 40 days. Prancing around right across the valley. All up in your face. And it happened that, that Jesse told David, go check on your brother. 
See how they make it out. See how they do it in the war. Take them some sandwiches, you know, take them a little Pepsi and sandwiches, and uh, see how they make it out. <laughs> David shows up. I need somebody to be very, very careful how you cast out young folk. Yes. David shows up. Yes. See, you don't know where your blessing going to come from. See, we look for the mighty people. We look for the people with all the titles and all the degrees and everything. And sometimes there's some little child that may give you an encouraging word to give you a direction from the Lord. So be careful how you cast out folk and how you look down on folk that don't have titles and don't dress like you and don't look like you and don't smell like you and don't drive a car like you and don't live in a house like you. Because God does not deal in that nonsense. God is no respecter person. And I hate this, but if God can speak to a donkey. Okay, I know he can use me. Okay, I, I, I clean that one up, okay? But think about the things that God does and how God does things. And God doesn't really need no cute folk. But be careful because David showed up to check in on his brother because his father sent him. And then David heard what they were talking about. The, Israel, the Israelites and the Philistines were in battle of array. And David left everything with, the, with uh, his carriage in verse 22. And he came to see his brethren. And as he talked with them, Goliath showed up. You don't know where your blessing is going to come from. How many people knew that the baby Moses? How many of us sitting here today knew we would be here? How many ministers here they knew you'd be a minister when you were in diapers? <laughs> or when you were in high school? Or when you was out there tearing it up, smoking the dope, choking, joking, doing it? Uh... That's why I thought, folks, don't discount whatever's happened in your life. Because God used everything to mold us and to make us. And as somebody said, so that when you see the thorns in your flesh, so when we think back over our life, we won't get too filled up with ourselves like we think we have arrived. Because I know from whence I've come, and I know what the Lord has done. And every now and then God will remind us. Look at verse 23 of 1 Samuel 17. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name. Out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words. This time David heard him. I like David because David is the youngest one, couldn't be in the army, but God's going to use David. That's why I said next week for our young believers in Christ's service, come on out. Support him. You don't know. You don't know next president. You don't know. Uh, according to who can, who can be a nominee now, I ain't trying to get political, but according to who can be a nominee now. And look at verse 24. All the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. They in position to fight, but when Goliath shows up, And all God is trying to tell us, some big stuff going to show up in your life. Don't be afraid. The only time you need to be afraid is when you're not showing up in the name of Jesus. When you show up in your own flesh, you're going to have some problems. When you show up in your own power, your own strength, you're going to have some problems. When you show up trying to manipulate trying to do things according to your mind and what you want to see and what your agenda is and what your goal is, you're going to mess up. But you got to go in the name of Jesus. Stop trusting in yourself and trust in God. Look at verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up surely to defy Israel? Is he come up? And it shall be that the man who kills him, the king now, Saul saying, Whoever can knock this big dude off, I'm going to enrich him with great riches. I'm going to give him one of my daughters. And they don't have to pay taxes. Uh-oh, I'm not trying to be political. And his house will be free. For, and it's, that, that means he won't have to pay taxes. I, I, I ain't trying to say nothing, but I don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to pay taxes. I ain't trying to say nothing. You don't have to pay taxes. <laughs> I'm just saying what I'm saying. And then David, David's supposed to take them to lunch and check it. David spoke to the men that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? And take it away the approach of Israel. For he who is, David said, wait a minute. 
who is this uncircumcised? In other words, who is this heathen that he should defy the armies of the living God? And sometimes you got to ask yourself this question, and you don't have to, you have, who is this that's coming against me? Because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So when that thing shows up, you got to assess what's going on. But if, you don't have to remain fearful because if you come in the name of the Lord, if you come in the name of Jesus, I don't care how big the giant might be. Oh, my God. Somebody said in the day, you got a bunch of stuff that's built up in your life and it's become a giant. It's become a giant. And today we're going to show you how to knock that giant off. Knock him down and cut his head off. Lord have mercy. Once you cut the head off, it's not like one of those insects or, or, or animals that can grow another head. <laughs> you cut a man's head off. Headless. Okay. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on. My God. And verse 27, the people answered and told him, it shall be done to them what, whoever kills Goliath. But Eliab, his oldest brother, heard David talking, and Eliab got mad. Like, David, man, who told you to come down here? See, you don't know where your blessings come from because if, if his father, Jesse, hadn't sent them to look in on them, they would still be scared of Goliath. But somehow God engineers our victories when we don't even know it. Sometimes you don't know who your victory is going to come through because sometimes we got the nerve to cast out those that came to free us. Oh, Lord. Because they don't look like victory. How a young boy going to look like victory? Elijah was mad. I said, man, would you get out of here, man. You just full of pride. And you just gnaw to your heart. You just came out here that you might see the battle. You ain't got nothing to offer. You don't have no weapons. You are nobody. You just down here being no. Go tend to daddy. She go home somewhere. I'm mad at you anyway because not long ago you had the nerve to get anointed. They came. Samuel came by the house. Samuel came by our house to anoint who's going to replace Saul. And we all standing up there all polished with three-piece suits on and everything. We stand there all polished, hair all done, teeth all brushed and everything. Got all, you know, we, we. And they had the nerve that God said, not that one, not that one, not that one. You got any more, son, Sam? I got the little dirty boy out there in the field. That little ruddy dude, that little red ruddy dude. Call him in. They call a little red ruddy dude in. And God told Samuel, he the one. See, you know, I'll tell you, you don't know. That's why I no longer look at people and try to size folk up because you don't know what God's going to do with them. You don't know how God's going to use them. They may look like they have nothing, but if they got God, they got everything that they need and might have everything I need. So be careful who you cast off. Be careful who you thumb your nose at. Be careful who you look down on. It's a sad person to look down on folk because that means that you got to use folk for, stepping, for a stepping stool because you ain't got nothing to step on. Oh, if you knew who the Lord was, you would have something to step on because God would help you out. But when you begin to step down on people, talk down to people, and tell people, go back, go take care of your sheep. You don't have no business here. Get out of here. Oh, my, my God. David said in, in, in 29, what have I done? I ain't do nothing. You know that little boy, do. You know that older brother won't beat him up. I ain't do nothing, Eli. Leave me alone, man. Drop down to verse 32. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the Philistine. Lord, here's this young boy coming to check on his brothers who are in the army. And he goes and tells Saul, don't let nobody, don't be afraid. Mm -mm. But they were so fearful, they began to listen to him. They said, either, either, either David's crazy or he ain't taking his medication. You know, something ain't right. Look at verse 33. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man, he's a man of war from his youth. You can't fight the giant, you little boy, because this giant was a, has been in the army since he was a boy, and he's 10 feet tall. And I found out the average height of, of, of an Israelite during that time was 5 foot 5 or 5 foot 6. So if he's 10 feet, you let somebody two times. 
I don't know what David had in them sandwiches, but Lord, do whatever David ate that day, whatever he drank for breakfast. <laughs> Amen. Look at verse 34. And David said unto Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. David said, Y'all don't understand. I got uh, some experience, therefore I got some expectations. I'm coming, if you got experience with God, it affects your expectation from God. I got some experience with him. Each victory helps you some other victory to win. And what David said, you might be looking at a giant, but I look at him like a lion and I look at him like a bear. If God gave me the victory of a lion and a bear, I'm going to get the victory over Goliath. I don't know how David saw that. Amen. Don't tell me what God won't let you see. Other folks don't see what you see. That's why when you explain to them what you see, they don't understand what you see, so they don't know how to respond to what you see because they can't see what you see because God didn't show them. He showed you, and he didn't show you for you to run your mouth. He showed you for to get prepared so you can do what he showed you to do. And then once you do what they show you to do, then everybody will see what God showed you. See, the seed is not in the speaking. The seed is in the doing. See, the, 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 the seed is not... In the explanation, the scene is the, is the illustration. Oh, my God. See, stop running your mouth and get busy. David. David said, I'm going to do this. Look at verse 37. David said, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, out of the paw of the bear, he would deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Wow. David spoke with such a determination, with such a confidence, because, see, that's the way you get, when, you, when you're a babe in Christ, you don't talk like that. But when God has raised you off your sick bed, when God has healed you from something, when God has delivered and set you free, you let folk know. You, you, you give them your testimony. God has done this for me, and God has done that for me. And the same God that did that for me, he's telling me right now, he's going to do this for us. David was not trying to get an award for himself. David was trying to bless the Israelites. We need more folk in the church that not just trying to get a name for themselves, not trying to get a blessing for themselves, but trying to get a blessing for the kingdom of God. Because he says, if you do this for me, I'll take care of you. Your cup is empty because it's all for you. Oh, my God. Look at verse 38. Saul, I guess Saul, the king, said, well, let me help this young boy out. And Saul armed David. I do have three points, but I don't feel like going there. And Saul, uh, I, amen, amen. I, I'm conventional. I got the three points, but I don't need the three points. God said, just go through the story. Amen. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head, and so he also armed with a coat of mail. But David girded his sword upon his armor, and he, and, he, and he decided not to go, for he had to prove it. And David said to him, Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them on. He said, I can't use this. This is not what God told me to wear. This is not what God told me to do. And sometimes you got to let some folk be unconventional in what they do because the anointing breaks the yoke. See, very, if you want everybody to do everything the same way, you're not going to get what God wants because God is a God of diversity. Yes, things need to be decent and in order because he's not a God of confusion, and confusion and diversity are two different things. David took them all. See, when you have confidence in God, God speaking to you, you got to know, no, I don't need your stuff. That's what you fight with. I got to fight my fight the way God's telling me to fight. Well, well, Minister Tony, I think you should I think you should go up to him and tell him so-and-so. The Spirit of God ain't telling you that. I'm glad you're interested. And I appreciate your advice. But the Spirit of the Lord told me, be still. And to know that he is in fact God. So we read on in the story here. So, so here David takes the staff in his hand, and what did he get? Five what? Five smooth. He's going up against a giant. There's some giants in our lives we need to go up against. Somebody else that you talk to said, look, take my stuff, take my gun. 
Take my Uzi. Take my knife. Take my bat. Take my golf club. And you like. I don't think so. It's not working for me. That's the thing about keeping your focus when God is speaking to you. You got to be very careful about the distractions. Because sometimes when people want to help you, they're not helping you. Don't get mad at them. Don't, don't, don't get mad at them. Like, like what, what did Jesus tell Peter? He said, get thee behind me. Because you don't really understand what I'm about to do. And then, ooh, was it Peter and John? He talked about, how about this one? He said, mind your business. Do your ministry. And I said, okay, all right. He took five smooth stones, and I was researching why five. Something said, I couldn't verify, said that Goliath had brothers. They said he had some big brothers, and David was saying to himself, I haven't confirmed about why I'm going to share it with you, that in just in case, but see, I understand that after David cut off Goliath's head, his brothers ran. But it said that Goliath had some giant brothers. And David, of course, you know he only used one stone, so he was good at what he did. You know, they should have had that in the Olympics, the slingshot. They, they got the shot put, but they don't have the sling. They don't want to bring the slingshot because the brothers would get them in the hood. And, uh, 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 okay. Uh. And he put them in a shepherd's bag. And he went over the swing in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. But see, it's victory in the name of Jesus. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before. That's, this Goliath had so much stuff, he had to have a little guy. <laughs> he had all this stuff on, and it was so much so heavy, he had to get another soldier Another Philistine soldier, he had to hire somebody to bring his stuff. He's a giant, 10 feet tall. David about 4 feet tall. Why you need all that stuff? In my mind, Goliath must have said to himself, if this little fool got enough heart to come up against me, I better bring my best game. Or they trying to set me up so that when I come out, they can shoot arrows or do whatever they do. Something's going on there. But when, when, little, when, when the little kids start barking, that you better be careful. Look at verse 42. And, the, and when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him. He just despised him. For he was but a youth and a ruddy and of a fair countenance. Look at this little pump pen, pumpkin. It's, it's, it's Halloween. Look at this little. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God, small G-O-D, that Philistine cussed David out. That's crazy. This big ten-foot man cussing out a four-foot kid. Doesn't that look crazy? Cussing out. Look at verse 44. And the Philistines said to David, come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. He's talking all this stuff because one thing about the giants that show up in our lives, they're going to keep on talking stuff until you shut them up. You ever had somebody, you just had to, you had to button their lips. I'm, no, never mind. I, mm. Then said David to the Philistine, listen, thou comest to me with a sword, with a spear and with a shield, I would have, I would have written, and another person carrying your stuff with you. But this is the key to the message. But I come to thee in what? In the name of the Lord of hosts. When you see the Lord of hosts, that's talking about the army. That's talking about the captain of the army. That's talking about the, 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 the host of the Lord. He said, I come in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. He said, you better know something. I didn't come here by myself. You see me with my stones, you see me with my slingshot, and you see me, I'm a little young boy. But you better believe something. I got more than you see. I have five smooth stones plus. See, see, people don't understand. When they come against us, God's trying to tell them, don't mess with them now. Because you're not really just messing with them. You're messing with them and me in them. Oh, my God. Look at verse 46. 
David said, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day into the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Your day is about number. Your time is about up. You've been walking back and forth for 40 days, and you've been ter- terrorizing the Israelites. You've been terrorizing my brothers. and ter- you got a whole army over there terrorized. But guess what? Your day is over. That's why some folks don't like when some folks show up. Because when the anointing walks in, they be, uh-oh. See, the enemy trouble at the name of Jesus. See, so, when you come in the name of the Lord, that's why some folks get kind of rattled. And, and they get to stumbling over their words and stuff. Because when you come in the power in the name of the Lord, it changes the atmosphere. It, it, as a matter of fact, it confuses some other folks that they start fighting each other. That's what it said in Second Chronicles. They said, all they did was just start singing. And it comes. You want to confound somebody? Just walk in the anointing. Just walk in the power of the anointing of God. You will confound. Sometimes you ain't got to say nothing. And folks just start looking and don't like you. You ain't said a word. The anointing spoke. You just walked in. They said, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Something about to happen. Authority just came in. Uh. In verse 47, all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's that he will give you into our hands. you got to know how what God is saying. The battle is not yours. It's the Lord. And God said, all you have to do is get dressed for battle and show up and let me fight. I want you to show up. I want you to get the victory. I want you to give me the glory. But I want you to show up. Don't stay home. Don't retreat. Don't be afraid. Don't, you know, don't tell everybody, oh, no, don't mess. No. In the name of the Lord, when you go, you got victory in the name of the Lord. And look at verse 48. It came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hastened and ran toward the army to meet the Philistines. That's deep. Yeah. <laughs> David did what? See, when you know you got the victory, <laughs> he ran to. He ran to. Oh, my. When you know you got it. Like when you know you can beat somebody. They all the way down the block. You will run to them and bust them up. Because you know you can beat them. You know you got the victory. Whew, come on. Wow. See, when the, it said, when, 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 when Goliath rose up to meet David, David hurry up and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. When Goliath rose up to call him out, cool. All right. Okay, you think I'm playing. Your parents ever said you, told you that when you kept messing around, doing the wrong thing? Oh, you think I'm playing. You think I'm playing with you. Keep on campaigning, you're going to get elected. <laughs> and as David was running, David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and sling it. And smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon his face to the earth. See, your, our giants that come in our lives have no idea what you got in your pocket. Better yet, they don't know who you got in you. Because you come in the name of the Lord. God is telling us today, I want you to learn how to fight and stand in my name. I want you to stand on my word, and I want you to fight in my name. When you get a bad report, fight in my name. I'm your healer. When they talk about getting laid off, fight in my name. I'm your provider. God is trying to let us know that there's victory in the name of Jesus. So David prevailed over the Philistines, and when David prevailed, the whole army of Israel prevailed. When you prevail, your whole church family prevailed. What, what happened in the book of Joshua? When Achan sinned, when Achan took some stuff, the whole camp of Israel got in trouble, started losing the victory. So you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not in this thing by yourself. Be very, very careful how you just do stuff. For yourself because you're connected with family. So when David got the victory, it wasn't a victory just for himself. It was a victory for the entire country or the entire uh, people of Israel. That's what's powerful. When you do stuff for the kingdom, I heard in the altar prayer. Learn how to do for the kingdom. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto thee. So David put his hand in his bed. David prevailed 
and he slew that Philistine, and there was no sword. And David had a sword. David's cold blood. Look at verse 51. Said, therefore David ran and stood upon the... He must have put his foot on him. Am I right, Reverend T? Did he put his foot on him? See, when the guy is dead, you can put your foot on him. You can say all kinds of stuff. You can kick him. Yeah, where, where your mouth at now? Hey! Hey, big boy! What's up? Hey, can't hear you! <laughs> He put it, he stood upon the, he took Goliath's sword, took his sword out of the sheep, and, and, took it. Cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they did what? Whatever is coming at you in your life, when you stand in the name of the Lord, and when that thing falls, everything else that came along with it, it's going to run. Yeah. Everything that's attached to it, because they sent their best out to get you. And God allowed you to defeat the best. The giants are going to come in our lives, but don't you be afraid, because there's power and victory in the name of Jesus. And look at verse 52. Now everybody got heart. Those little 15-year-old kids, now all the men come out. <laughs> oh, I wasn't scared. I, I really wasn't scared. I just ain't feel like fighting. I just say, because you last time they locked me up because I knocked the dude out, right? You know, and they said my hands were legal wet, lethal weapons, so, you know, I really feel like fighting. I, you know, I let young boy go, you know. I don't want to mess up my army uniform. You only get one a year. <laughs> I knew he was just talking. And I, 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 you know what? If he had come one more day, a 40, 41st day, if he had said he'd run his mouth one more day, one, y'all had to hold me back. One more day. Uh, David came. See, if, I went for the 41st day. If he came out the 41st day, well, no, the David came on the 40th day. See, my calendar said on the 41st day, if this dude show up again, if they show up in my... Fifty-two, they got up out of their bunkers and shouted and pursued the Philistines until they came to the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way of Shireen, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasing after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. Well, that's a victory for the whole camp. See, see you, we got some individual stuff, but there's some kingdom victories that we need to win. And David, look at verse 54. David took the head of the Philistines. He walked around with a head. I think Reverend Tate had to preach one time. I thought, I'll tell you how to get a head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> am I right about it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. And when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host of his army, Abner, who is this you? And they had to say, as I sold it, I don't know who he is, but I know one thing, I once was bound, <laughs> but now we free, we be free. <laughs> and the king said, go find out who he is. Victory in the name of Jesus. Victory in the name of Jesus. There's something about that name, Jesus. Acts 4.12 says, and there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among them by which we must be saved. Philippians 2.9-11 says, therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. I'm just talking about the name of Jesus. It's victory in the name of Jesus. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven 
and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So no matter when the giants come, how often they come, if they come in your life for 40 days or 45 days, God is trying to let you know you go beat that thing in the name of Jesus. Don't go out there without the whole armor on. Go in the name of Jesus. You can walk into a meeting in the name of Jesus and confound those that were getting ready to plan some stuff against you. There is power in the name. I tell you, when you go to the doctor and you sit in the waiting room, don't just wait. Talk about the name. Pray in the name of Jesus. I just got a report this morning that somebody was going for all these tests, but in the name of Jesus, they couldn't find nothing when they went back. I'm trying to let somebody know there's power in the name of Jesus. John 14, 13 says, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified. Luke 10, 17, the 72 return with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. In your name. Acts 4, 30, while you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are, are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. There's something about that name. See, see we've been living under our, our power because we don't use the name enough because we, we think we're bad enough sometimes. We don't, no, don't call my big brother. No, no, I can take care of this myself. This, this is lightweight. Hey. When the giants show up, it's not lightweight. They're trying to wreck your life. They're trying to wreck your family. They're trying to wreck your house. They're trying to wreck your ministry. They're trying to wreck your spirit. And you got to let them know, you've been prancing back and forth in my life a little bit too long. I'm about ready to deal with you. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved, Romans 10 and 13. At the name of Jesus. What's that song? There's something about that name, Jesus. <laughs> my God. But Peter said, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up. Oh, my God. Proverbs 18, 10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. And see, David understood something about the power in the name of David. David said, you know what? I was thinking about what God has done in my life. He already delivered me from a lion and bear. Gave me the victory. He said, and when I got the animal out of their mouth, when they turned against me, I grabbed them by their beard. I knocked them off. But David said, I know I didn't do it. Be careful with the pronouns that we use. But David was trying to explain to Saul, I, to the Lord, did it. I, being empowered by God, I did this thing. And all I want to leave you with today is this power. In the name of Jesus. There's a victory in the name of Jesus. And I don't know how, how PJ knew what I was preaching today, but he said, tell me who can stand me for us when we call on that great name. Jesus. Jesus. Precious. Jesus. We have the victory. Then it got good. He said, oh, oh, oh. Tell me who can stand be for us when we call on that great name. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. And then y'all join in and say, whoa, 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 whoa. tell me who can stand be. That's why I'm not afraid. I don't travel by myself no more. I travel with Jesus. I move in the name of Jesus. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. That's my authority in the name of Jesus. You got to understand, folk don't like you when you walk in authority. My, my. You see, see that, that says October is past appreciation month. And it says I will give you pastors according to my heart that will feed you with knowledge and understand. And say, I'll give you pastors to tell you what you want to hear. Some folk don't like to hear what they need to hear. Some folk don't like authority. So when you're in a leadership position, everybody ain't going to love you. Don't fool yourself. Don't go home crying. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> you don't need to know why. Because if your motive is right, and if your heart is right, 
People will understand what it is you're trying to do. And see, even if you make a mistake, if your motive's right, people are willing to listen. But if you have to get somebody or to get something the wrong way, then how about those of us who want folk to follow us and we can't follow nobody? They had to follow the anointing of David. You didn't hear nobody say, please don't let that young boy. His brothers ain't saying, don't send my brother out there. Did you hear him say that in the word? Elijah said, send him out there. He learned a lesson. He painted him out. He sent him out there. So you don't know where your blessing going to come from. Just because the person doesn't have a title, don't mean they don't have a gift. Oh, wow. How do you think words get done in the church? If leaders don't have people working with them, how do you think work get done? Oh, my God. If everybody needed a title, we wouldn't get nothing done. I tell folks, you work whether you got a title or not. If God gifted, it, oh, my God. If you can only work when you got a title, you're not, you're not no worker. You're a title grabber. Oh, my. David didn't have no title. He, he took some sandwiches to, to his brother. He was a sandwich maker or a sandwich carrier. But the sandwich carrier delivered the entire army of after. Stop discounting folk. Oh, they ain't got nothing to offer. Stop looking in their wallet. Stop looking in their pocketbook. Stop looking at what they drive and how they smell because what I have to offer may not be there. It might be inside of me. And if you create an environment where I can use my gift, maybe you will see what I have to offer. But if everything got to be done your way or the highway, or, or you got to do everything yourself, why are you asking me to be on your ministry and you don't want me to do nothing? Saul was the king and leader of the army and let David Can you imagine how afraid Saul was to be the king to let a young boy come in? With a peanut butter jelly sandwich <laughs> and the little oh, that, that's how that's how deep God is. That little baby. God speaks to children. A young child shall lead them. Yeah, we know a lot. And we can pour a lot into folk. But God anointed them too. They have something to offer also. That's why you can't be shutting them down all the time. Bring them to church. Let them make some noise. How are they going to learn? Got people, as soon as their child cries, they got to run out. Run out for what? Some of us want to cry. But well, if Pastor don't sit down, I'm going to make the same noise. If Pastor don't stop preaching, ah! Ah! Somebody see my paper! Ah! <laughs> we just know we can't get away with it. That's all. We 302 you, that's right. If you don't have the sound of babies and noise in your church, your church ain't going to grow. You need them babies in here. Oh, did you hear all that noise? Them ba- I said, no, but I heard all noise. You make it about. <laughs> and all your distractions, and we just got up and you moved. <laughs> Act like you ain't got no children. There's victory in the name of Jesus. But sometimes, as a leader, God will flip the script. Because God doesn't call the leader to do everything. He's got other people to do some stuff. David was not even in the army. But I know one thing. Once it got delivered, ain't nobody say, what is he doing here? Where he go? Get that lady out the church. She don't smell right. Then last, next week you find out that lady doesn't smell right. She left a two thousand dollar check. She said, "I saw a hole in your roof." Right. <laughs> don't judge me by what I got on. You don't know. You don't know what the Lord. We entertain angels unaware. That's why you got to walk in the spirit. They got to walk in the anointing. And if it wasn't for God's grace on us, if it wasn't for God's grace on us, if it wasn't for God's grace on us, you know how so much would look and smell. You know where we would be. The God's saying, hey, the same grace that I bestowed, the love I bestowed upon you, I want you to bestow it upon other people. See, when you grow in Christ, you get to a point where 
You can tolerate everybody because God tolerated me. Oh, you don't have to think like I think. We had to learn how to, as, as uh, Brother Ron Smith said, we had to learn how to disagree without being disagreeable. We're going to have difference of opinion, but somebody got to make a decision. When somebody, when there's an argument at your house with your kids, and you the mother or father, who makes the decision? Whoever's in charge. This is the way it's going to be. And one, probably one person ain't going to like it. Well, they have options. The door's not locked till like 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> and you, hey, come on now. You don't like what's happening up in here? People get mad when you have to make a decision. People get mad at pastors when they get decisions. Because a lot of times we think one-sided. We don't think global. We don't think kingdom. We don't think church wide. We think about ourselves. So you got to be very, very careful how you think. Very careful how you think. And let folk in. Let folk in. How are they going to grow when they don't know? And how are they going to know that they can't come in the door? So you've been around a while. You're all nice and polished and everything. You all polished up. Give somebody else a chance, please. Oh, by this time, they ought to know. They have the chronological age. Excuse me, they don't have the spiritual age because they haven't been in the Word. Give folk a chance to get in and get situated and everything. Oh, did you smell that liquor on his breath? Nobody smelled it on yours. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'd rather have somebody with liquor on their breath and seeking the Lord than somebody with liquor on their breath and know everything and, and God can't use them because they're so high in my... Give folk a chance. You just got delivered from Kirk by last week. How are you going to jump on everybody else? Yeah. That's, that's what God would have us. That's, that's what the renewing of the mind, how you look at people, how you think. And you help people along the way. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. You say, Pastor, you crazy. I already know I'm crazy. Tell me something different. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, think it's Maxie, you know you messed up. I know I messed up. Can you tell me how I can fix it? People already know what they did wrong. You ever notice that? When you tell your kid, why you do so and so, and all they can say is, I didn't do it because they know you know it. <laughs> I know I did it, and you know I did it. Let's talk about what you're going to do to me. <laughs> that's, 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 come on. Okay. Kids, kids will say, I ain't do it because they like, this, this person crazy. They know I did it. They called me in. Why did you do? What is my penalty? That's all I want to know. I don't want to discuss it on what I think. I only want to bring it up because when I bring it up, you're going to get, you're going to, the penalty going to get worse. Because it's something about you, Mama, when you hear it again. Daddy, when you hear it again. You're getting sick, so I don't want to repeat it. Do, do, do like we used to do. Put the book at the back of your pants. See, with your clothes on. <laughs> My father put a cover back. Well, I'm going to beat you a square. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let us all stare at Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we do it real. You got to do it real. It's real.